we stayed in contact with a former boss of ours um, who was who was mates with Bob that we remembered. So, look, we just sent an email off to him and, and he got back to us and he said, yeah, just put something, you know, put something together and we'll send it to Bob. So sent it to Bob and um, saying, hey, Mr. Mr. Hawk. <laughs> hey, bro. Yeah, hey, bro. How are you? How are you, mate? We'd love to have a beer with you but also like to talk to you about, you know, setting up a beer company with you, thinking we'd never, you know, get anything back and, and Nathan and I had made a pact together um, when we'd sent that email off. We'd said if it gets back to us and if it's not a hard no, we're going to throw everything at this because we just had a feeling. So got back to us two or three days later and the email said, look, guys, um, not sure about setting up a beer company. I'm 86. Um, but if you're ever back in Australia, let's have a beer. And so Nathan and I took that as, yeah, that's, 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 that's not a no, that's a yes. <laughs> yes. And to be honest, we'd also found out through this contact of ours, Nicholas, um, he said, look, I've spoken to Bob. If you fly back and you sort of, you're serious about this and you present it, he's, there's a pretty good chance he'll do it. So it wasn't on a whim, but it was still a massive risk. And so we jumped on a plane, Qantas jet, and we came back and met Bob in his kitchen and had this whole presentation prepared and he wanted us to bring him a cappuccino. So we got a cappuccino with one sugar, which was, again, random. We're getting at a cafe, getting Bob Hawke a, a cappuccino. <laughs> Brought it into his house. I've never been so nervous in my entire life. Oh, I especially, can imagine. You know, you walk into this house that's just five levels of amazingness mm. and you're in Bob Hawke's kitchen. It's just – Well, that was the yeah. funny thing as well, right, because we thought – We've got our blazers yeah, on we and had, stuff. Yeah, we had. We're like, we're definitely going to be taken into a boardroom. There's going to be a big oak table. He'll sit at one end. We'll sit down the other. There'll be a butler or something. It was, he thought we were early for one. So it's almost, we caught him off guard. He was sitting at a, just a sort of pretty simple little table on the side of the kitchen, newspapers strewn across the, the table. And he was kind of semi in his PJs still. It was so informal from his end, yet so polished and we're from New York and we've just... Yeah, and I think that threw us, to be honest with you. It was sort of like we're expecting these, we're in these, you know, pitch meetings in, in America where there are these huge boardrooms and you're used to that. But then you come in and there's the ex-prime minister in his kitchen and it just sort of... Like having right. a cappuccino. Yeah, which is exactly, yeah. which is so Australian and so yeah. Bob. You've um, got your presentation yeah. manuals and stuff and there's all the all his papers and crosswords yeah. and stuff and you're sort of like, can I move these? And uh, We did this presentation and Bob basically said, look, I'm going to stop you, stop you guys right there. And he said, now don't bullshit me. Why do you think this will work? And it was the question that we were not prepared for. We were prepared for the marketing plan. We were prepared for how we were going to, Build, you know, make the beer, all this other stuff, um, funding, blah, blah, you know. And then he'd said that question and I just froze and thankfully Nathan turned turned to Bob and said, well, Mr. Hawk, with all due respect, this has to work. We've just quit our jobs back in New York. Our boss is already – and we already told our <laughs> yeah. boss he said yes, so he'd be stitching us up kind yeah. of thing. So he said, okay, I think he liked that. He liked that, wow, these guys are – either really stupid or <laughs> there's something in this. So he, he said, yeah, I'll do it on the one condition that you – I don't want to earn anything out of the company um, or my royalties or share of the company go to Landcare Australia, which is Australia's largest environmental organisation he helped set up um, back in the 80s. And that was a really nice synergy for us and we shook on it and he took us out to his, his amazing balcony in Northbridge overlooking the, the harbour. It was interesting because when he invited us out onto the balcony after he'd like given us the blessing and we brought him some cigars, which he was so excited about. He loves cigars. He loves cigars. Cuban cigars a lot. It's a rule. When you go to Bob's house, yeah. you bring him a cigar. <laughs> and uh, we'd spent nearly two hours outside then chit-chatting and um, listening to him tell war stories and everything that you've ever wanted to ask your hero kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, in a bit of a – subdued panic because you're thinking I just need to get the hell out of here before he says no. Um, or before I say something ridiculous. Before you say stupid. something well, yeah. stupid because you're there because it's, it's really weird yeah. surreal moment because you're in front of this you know this incredible icon, um, icon but at the same time you want to get the hell out of there. Um, but he he loved just having the boys over. He really loved it and you know he loved telling a joke and maybe it wasn't the most appropriate joke sometimes, but um, 
he was who he was. He was very authentic like that and it was hilarious. It, but, yeah, as Dave said, we were, we were petrified at the same time. One thing you guys said in your prep sheet was only do business with people you'd want to have a beer with. Now, I love that. It's funny because we've only sort of just realised that, I'll be honest with you, in the last three years we didn't start out saying that was going to happen and we found that when we don't follow that rule and when we haven't done that we've gone down the wrong path with mm. certain people. Um, but so it's a hiring policy now. Yeah, from now on. We actually, it's part of our culture once they, after the sort of the third interview, if they get past that, we take them out for a beer as and well. They don't know. And they don't know. Well, they and do if, now. And, oh, if they, and if they pass the... Would you go on back and have a beer with that person by yourself, mm. like not surrounded with friends? Like would you actually go and have a beer with them? And it's like, yeah, I really like enjoyed their company. It's like, great. I do love the idea of it, – it's very cup, right? Really you only want to work with, you only want to deal with people that you, you, you can have the opportunity to have a valuable relationship with, a strong relationship with. Now not every human on the planet is supposed to get along. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. So – you may as well, particularly the people you work with, mm. you really should love being with them because you're with them every, you're with them more than anyone else in your life. Mm. But even people that you're doing business with, you should really uh, want to be with those people. I mm. mean, even at Cub, every new member we, we interview, mm. every single one, mm. one of us does their introduction. And we're like, okay, these people are, are nice people. They're good people. They, they're going to fit with this community. It's so important. Mm. Yeah. It's so important. And they should definitely be put through the would I have a beer uh, again alone with this person. Yes. Yeah. It's it's one way to package it up but I guess it's just a matter of, yeah, you gotta, you got to trust your gut with people mm. and you've got to use your intuition and, and, you know, you might not be exactly the same person but it's, there's this unspoken. Same ethics. You know, yeah. you may have the same ethics. You may have very similar values. You may mm. be very different people but have mm. similar values. And and what I find is that people with similar values tend to find each other mm. and then they tend to stay together for, for longer. Mm. So now you're going to be setting up your own brewery. And how is beer actually made? How long does it take? It's not like wine where it takes forever, does it? That's the good thing about it. Yeah, it generally takes between two and three weeks to ferment. Okay. Yeah. So it's a quick turn over time. And what, what actually happens, it goes, what goes through what pipe, what's the ingredient, what, what's in it? You've got a lot of malt, you've got a lot of hops, you've got a lot of water. What's um, hops? Hops are the flavouring of the, the beer. Well, they're, like, okay. they're like pellets, they're like buds mm -hmm. that grow on farms and when they're heated up in the boil, um, the resin, the oil from the hops and there's so many various varieties, they seep out into the boil to give – the, the beer of flavour and you've got so many different types of combinations, um, weights of how much you put in, whether you add hops later in, the, later in the boil or even when it's fermenting to kind of punch a little bit more of that particular characteristic into it. It's really interesting. Yeah. 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 It's very – it's intricate. Yeah, it is and it's a science. Mm. Uh, and and so, so do you, were you guys involved in choosing the flavour – it, and was or was Bobby or how, how did that work? We went we went through sort of two or three brewers, um, sort of testing with them before we chose our actual brewer, um, and we we thankfully found um, a guy called Justin Fox who's um, very well known in in the brewing industry. He just got it immediately and I think put the the brew in on Boxing Day cricket test the the couple of months before we launched, and then came out with this first brew we tasted and went, we flew down to Melbourne and we, we were brewing it in Melbourne um, and he tasted it. We tasted it and just went, yes, that that's, was a, the that's amazing. Oh, and that's another point. So I talk about not doing things the same way as other beer companies, any craft beer companies. We launched with a lager, which is the last thing you'd want to launch with if you're a craft beer company. You'd really want to launch with a pale ale or an IPA. Why is that? Just something that you can flex your muscles with a little bit more in terms of, and also more appealing to that to that drinker. Mm. The craft beer drinkers tend to want um, something more flavorful, whereas the masses, you know, we're still we're still selling eighty percent of volume throughout Australia is 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 lager. But um, it's actually worked for us because there's a lot of good craft pale ales out there and IPAs. There's not a ton of great craft lagers, and we actually won the best the best uh, lager trophy in the country um, in 2018. How good is that? 
and we took it to Bob and he's got a photo with him with the with the trophy and he was stoked. In the pool room? In the straight yeah, to the straight room. to the pool room. <laughs> he loved that beer. That's the other thing. Yeah. He genuinely really loved it. He loved it so much that he actually smug used to smuggle six packs um into the SCG to watch the cricket. Now anyone who's been to the SCG knows that it's generally contracted. So you can only drink cult like Cardiac Carlton Draft room. and VB and whatnot and he's like, no, nah, they're not telling me what to do. So <laughs> he'd smuggle it, smuggle the six-pack in and I don't even know if he was checked at the door, but what are you going to say to Bob Hawke? And he'd go up to his, go up to the corporate box and he'd have them put them in the fridge and he'd sit there and just sip on, on, his, on his tinnies of Hawke's lager for, for the day, which is pretty hilarious. It was oh. a real, that was a re- Probably like one of the nicest compliments that I think that we'd ever got. It would also be un-Australian for someone to take you know, Hawks, uh, Hawks beer off Bob Hawk. Yeah, you know it I mean? would like, be. Yeah, you'd literally be, be sacked and you'd booted be, from the yeah, country. Yeah, exactly. you would. Get the fuck out of here. 